Hi, my name is Paul Horn. I am a California probate attorney. I'm also a CPA. I quite get the question asked uh, from realtors, real estate professional. If a homeowner passes away, what do I do? Um, who are my boss? You know, there are four children. Who gets to sign my listing agreement? Um, tax issue. Mom bought it for hundred thousand dollars. Now it's worth a million dollars. When the children sell the house, do they have to pay any taxes? I'm gonna get into all that. Okay, so let's start with who's your boss. Who's your boss? Mom passed away. Mom passed away. Dad passed away. The first thing you ought to do to figure out who's your boss, the first thing you ought to do is pull the grand deed. You're going to pull the grand deed. When you pull the grand deed, let's say that if the house is in a trust, if the house is in a trust, you don't need a probate. If you pull the grand deed and the house is in a trust, if the house is in a trust, great. You're going to want to get a copy of the trust. Get a copy of the trust, okay? When you get a copy of the trust, as you flip through the pages of the trust, you're gonna come to the word successor trustee. Successor trustee. If I can have the camera zoom in a little bit to see if we, well, I don't know if it's possible, the word successor trustee, you're gonna flip the pages and find that page where it says successor trustee. And right next to it, you'll see the name John Smith. You're gonna see Mary Jones. That's who is, that's one of the four children who's going to be your boss. The successor trustee is going to administer the trust. The successor trustee is your boss in signing your listing agreement. Okay, so successor trustee, very important if the house is in a trust. How will you know if a house is in a trust? You're going to pull up the grand deed and it'll say the house is in a trust. Okay, if the homeowner is Mary Smith, it'll say Mary Smith, comma, trustee of the Mary Smith Family Trust. That's how you know it's in the trust, no probate needed. You can move on, find a successor trustee, get the listing, close your escrow. Now, if you pull up, if you pull up the grind D, if you pull up the grind D, and let's say, let's say our homeowner's name is Mary Smith. Let's say it's Mary Smith. When you see Mary Smith, name on the grind D, Mary Smith, when her name is on the grandee, Mary Smith, that means not in the trust. Because it's not in the trust, you're going to need a probate. Any homeowner who passed away without a trust is going to need a probate. Okay? So now, who's your boss? Who's your boss in a probate? Who gets to sign your listing agreement? Your boss? So let's say, let's say there are five children, four or five children, okay? Let's say however many children there are. The one of the son or daughter who goes and petition the court to make him or herself the personal representative is known as the petitioner. So whoever comes to the probate attorney and initiate the probate process, we call him or her the petitioner. Once the judge grants the authority that him or her becomes the one in charge, then we call him or her the personal representative. Personal representative, sometimes known as PR. P, personal or representative. Personal representative. In a probate, the personal representative is your boss, okay? And so just as vocabulary, the petitioner becomes the personal representative. We call him or her the executor if there's no will. We call him or her the administrator. Um, sorry, to back up a bit. Uh, if there's a will, we call him or her the executor. If there is, uh, no will, we call him or her the administrator, okay? So that's who your boss, that's your diagram, who's your boss, okay? Now, I'm gonna talk a little bit about taxes. Quite often, quite often, you're gonna get asked, hey, mom bought this house for 100,000, mom bought it only for 100 grand. We're in California, 30 years later, the house is worth a million bucks, right? It happens all the time. Mom bought it for a lowly 100 grand, now it's worth a million bucks. Son, daughter says, please sell this house for us. You know, you're our realtor, to sell it. But how much tax do I need to pay? Here's, here's the answer to that. Here's, here's the answer to that. So, taxes. When we talk about tax, we need to address basically two types of taxes. We're going to talk about capital gain. Capital gain, right? You are all familiar with capital gain. You know all about capital gain. What is capital gain? When you sell a house, basically selling price minus your cost basis, right? Mom bought it for 100 grand, you're gonna sell it for a million. So in the normal world, while mom is still alive, there'll be capital gain of $900,000, right? Mom bought it for 100 grand, 
she sold it for a million, capital gain of $900,000. But if she passed away, if the house is in a trust, and the house is in probate, if the children receives the house after mom died, after dad died, there's a step up basis. It's called a step up basis, and that escapes any capital gain, okay? Mom bought it for a lowly hundred grand. When mom dies, worth a million bucks. As long as the children receives the house after mom died, there's a step up basis. Step up basis, you sell it for a million dollars. Step up basis says the children's basis is a million dollars. On the date of death will be the value. On the date of death, whatever the value is becomes the children's cost basis. On the date of mom's death is worth a million bucks. That million bucks becomes the children's cost basis, zero capital gain, okay? So that's one huge issue to understand. The majority of time, children will not pay any capital gain, okay? Now, the other important issue is property tax. Is, is, is property tax. Now, mom bought it for 100 grand. She lived there for 40 years. She lived there for 40 years. So her property tax is really low. Property tax is really, really low, right? So the question is, if that, if that child, if those children are keeping a house, does the property tax get reassessed to a million bucks? The answer is no. If mom and dad pass a house to their son, their daughter, their children, Proposition 58 keeps the house from getting reassessed property tax-wise, okay? So make sure you have to send a daughter file this form. This form up here that you see is your Proposition 58. It's Form 58, okay? Parent to child exclusion. If it's grand, grandma to uh, grand, grandparents or grandchild, it's Prop, Prop, 90, Prop 193. It's a similar form, all right? So this form right here, very important, folks. File it. Mom and dad pass away, file it to make sure the property tax does not get, get reassessed. So that's tax. Just one last issue. You, you heard about death taxes, estate taxes, that's $11 million, 11.2, okay? But the majority of the time, people die with less than $11.2 million. These are the two issues. I just taught you those two issues. Um, so that's sort of tax for you. Now, um, I want to cover uh, probate real fast for you. I want to cover probate real fast for you. So if it's in a trust, you get a copy of the trust, you find a successor trustee, you sign your listing agreement, you go out with your escrow transaction. If it's in a probate, it's a different world. If it's in a probate, probably normally takes 12 months to do, but an a probate attorney like myself who knows how to conduct these probate in a more efficient manner, you're gonna be able to sell the house in about two and a half months, okay? So here's what I mean by that. We start the probate process, okay? Probate takes 12 months, but you see where it says for sale right here? I would file a petition for your, for your, for your client, your son or daughter. Uh, five or six weeks later, I have a court hearing date. Get him or her approved, okay? At the two month marks when orders and letter comes out, I'm gonna put on the screen here for you, letters. Very, very important, letters and orders. Here's letters, letter says, who is in charge? Letter says, full authority, limited authority, okay? This is letters right here. The other form, the other major form that comes out at the two month mark is orders. On the screen is orders. Order basically signed by the judge that says, Henry, the son, Mary, the daughter, is the personal representative, okay? With full unlimited authority. So letters and orders, very important. These two forms that, that were just on, on the screen for you, okay? So uh, the majority of probate flows like this. I file a probate petition, I go to court, I get your son or daughter approved, letters and order comes out, then you now give me the accepted offer. You give me the accepted offer, okay? You give me this stuff offer, now I put it on the notice of proposed action. This form right here is the notice of proposed action. I put it on there, I notify, I notify all the children, all the siblings that were selling the house, you know. Um, if there is no opposition, no objection, you get to close probate. Uh, you get to close that probate real estate transaction in about three months if it's full authority, okay? So um, thank you for watching. We'll cover limited authority in the next video, all right? Thank you so much. If you, um, by the way, one more important thing: if you ever go on a listing appointment, with uh, with mom and dad pass away, someone passed away, the homeowner passed away, don't be afraid to call my office, and I'll be your partner. You can put my speakerphone, and I will explain to them what is the process in this. What is the process if there's a trust? What is the process if there's no trust? I will be there at your listing appointment. Just call my office ahead of time, book an appointment and we'll make your transaction smooth for you, okay? Thank you for watching.